Shalom. I'm gonna give a praise on the glory to Hell by Shim Hal Shah by Shimra Kakadash and the Bible said that I was an apostle of great mills on the truth and peace blessing and citations to the hopeful elect. And um yeah man, I'm excited to do this lesson. I get to use um that picture <laughs> that I got from the elder Malcolm man. man. Like, this is this picture is it's it's, it's very eye opening. And um I was basically looking into the word black and it, it, it had this word here and the exact same spelling as it says um, here nigger and as you see it's spelled um, N-I-G-E-R and it says <clears throat> and it says um, as here it says negro or negre in Spanish I thought it was negra. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, it says dark skinned one. And it says Latin N I G E R being nigger. And it says black uh, negro. Now, usually a uh, contemptuous or a vulgar term. And it says any dark skinned person prevailing among or characteristics of american negroes yeah being the house of basically being the Jude, the judites man i was gonna say the house of judah which is the southern kingdom judah benjamin and levi man and like the scriptures may mention as well barnabas acts first and one it says now there were in the church that was at antioch certain prophets and teachers as barnabas and simeon that was called Nigger and Lucius of Cyrene and um, I don't know how to pronounce that um, name I think it's um I'm just gonna say Manon which had been brought up with Herod to brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul so as he makes mention of that word the N-I-G-E-R being Nigger that's how it was originally spelled and like I made mention I looked into the word black and it says the exact same thing. Black etymology. And as you see, it says black was used. I'm reading from here. Um, let me see if I can highlight it real quick. I'm reading from here. It says black was used of a dark skinned people. So you see what I mean? Dark skinned people. Just like you may mention in that dictionary. And just like it makes a mention over here as well, where is it? Somewhere down here. You know what, let me, let me search it. Search page, N-I-G-E-R. Yeah, here we go. It says, um, Latin, N-I-G-E-R. It says, had many of the same figurative senses. And as it makes mention, it says, gloomy, unlucky, bad, wicked, malicious. And yeah man it's, it's that same word that's in the scriptures n-i-g-e-r nigger <clears throat> and that just shows you man that just shows you who the israelites are like the clears the, the clears are there man and i just want to say to wada to you for allowing me to stumble upon that like literally i i came across it randomly but we know it was the lordy how about that allowed me to find it but yeah let me go to this video here and this is this is this is why I, I looked into it because of this video here, man. It it disappeared on my Facebook um feed, and I knew the Lord wanted me to talk about this, man. Let's play it. Why? Ask the bloody question. Why are they only teaching you the history of slavery as far back as the 16th and the 17th century? Why are they only going that far back? you to go farther back than that because then you'll actually find out the truth but from the 16th and 17th century we'll teach you about slavery you've got to go further back 
and you've got to understand um, and question why did they do this without throughout the whole of America in all the public schools why do they only go back as far as the 16th and 17th century to talk about slavery we've got to go further back than that because Islam Islam designed infernal slavery and then the Ashkenazi Khazars those who say they are Jews and are not are the ones that marketed it and literally Ishmael and Amalek have a history of coming together and coming up against the children of Israel and that's in um what's his name Gideon man Gideon Literally, um, where was it again? Camel. Ishmael and Amalek. No, that's not it. Oh, where is it? It might be... <clears throat> ah, here we go. Judges 6. And here we go. Verse 3 it says, And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites and their Ishmaelites, so-called Arabs, came up and the Amalekites being those Israelis and the children of the East, even they came up against them. So yeah, they, they've, they have a history of working together. Just like it makes mention in the book of Psalms, man. Psalms 83, and let me start on one, it says, keep not thy silence, O power, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power. For Lord, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that, have, they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and who's the Lord's people? The children of Israel, the sons of God. And consoled against thine hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Yahshua Allah being Israel may be no more in remembrance. And they did that. <laughs> Hence the, the slave the, the slave trade, man. Who 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 created the ships? What should I say? Who built the ships? The Ishmaelites, the Arabs? And who was the one who paid them? The Amalekites, the Israelis. <clears throat> and it says, For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites, yes, being the Arabs, of Moab and the Hagarines. And it says, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inheritance of Tyre. A sir also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot Salah. And yeah, man. They came together to take the children of Israel into captivity, man. They know what they did. I wouldn't say they know what they did. I mean the ones that are in a position of power. The ones that are in the governments. The ones at the top. Because they've, they've hid that from their, their people, man. And the regal Negro nomads exiled from the kingdom of Judah were the main recipients of it at the hands of the indigenous black African. And yes, the indigenous black Africans, what he's talking about is the inhabitants of Tyre, being those Hamite nations, man. <clears throat> and they helped, they helped um, Amalek and Ishmael or the Israelis and the the Arabs. <clears throat> and like he makes mention, man, the book of Joel. Joel 3 and 2. It says, I will also gather all nations and I will bring them down into the valley of your house, your part, meaning your house judgment, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So yeah, this was the heathen that did this. Like I made mention of Ishmael and Amalek and um, 
the the Hamites being the inhabitants of Tyre. And literally, if you actually look who's dwelling in the land of Israel right now, it's the Arabs, the Israelis, who are the Amalekites, and Ethiopians, or so-called Hamites. And they've, they've parted the land between them, man. <clears throat> and this is when they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. And here's the point right here, man. It says, yay, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? And these are Hamite nations, man. Like the lucky man mentioned, indigenous black Africans being those Hamites, man. Why? Because literally, when the Israelites, I was going to say, when the southern kingdom was fleeing from the persecution from the Romans, they went into the west coast of Africa. And there it was labelled um, the Kingdom of Judah, man, which was Judah, Benjamin and Levi. And they, and they settled there. And like the guy goes on to explain, he explains <laughs> what, what happened, man. But yeah, let me continue reading. It says, it says, yeah, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidane, and all the coast of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if you repent, recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver, my gold, and have carried it into your temples, my goodly, pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, being um, literally the twelve tribes, going into the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. And it says, have ye sold unto the Grecians? And we know who the Grecians are, man. It's the um, so-called Caucasians, that ye might remove them far from the border. It says, Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them. And that's like that um, deliverance from the land of the north and all these other lands where the Israelites were scattered, man. That's how the Lord's going to raise up the his, his elect of the elect out of these lands where they've been scattered. But the main deliverance is going to take place in North America, the land of the north. And it says, Behold, I'll raise them out of the place where ye have sold them, and I will return your recompense upon your own head. So yeah, they're going into captivity. <clears throat> and he says, And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off. For the Lord Yahweh have spoken it. So you see, the Lord's going to recompense these nations, man. The nation of the Lord is upon all nations, man. And his fury upon all the armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. And you know what? Let me see if I actually got that right. <laughs> Isaiah 34 and 2. Yeah, it says, for the indignation of the Lord, Yahweh Shim Hamashai is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. So yeah, man. The Lord's angry with these nations, man. <clears throat> and um actually you know what? Let me get this. Ezekiel 36 and 5, and it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yehovah, Hashem, Hashem, Shown in the fire of my jealousy, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all I do mere, which have appointed my land into their possession, with the joy of all their heart, with the spite for minds to cast it out for a prey. And that happened during, um, I think it was World War II, or after World War II, let me check. Um, the battle for... Declaration. Yeah, so here we go. It says on the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration was a public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War. So it was during World War One. It says announcing its support for the establishment of a national home for the the Wish people, being those Amalekites in Palestine, then an Ottoman region with a small minority. Um, what's it called? Wish population, and if you want to hear this Balfour or, or James, um, this Earl of Balfour off and James Balfour, they go back to um the elites, man, the Rothschilds, and you see, <laughs> it was literally Idumians giving the land to other Idumians, as it makes mention in Ezekiel thirty six and five, man. As it makes mention, it says, 
and against all the Idumia which have appointed my land into their possession. Yeah, the British being those Edomites and those Israelis being Edomites. <clears throat> and yeah, I'm sure there's another scripture I wanted to get. Hmm. You know what? Let's carry on with it with this video. Because you've got to understand, the regal class of the house of Judah came down from Israel and they came into the land of the black Africans. Yeah, like I made mention, they were fleeing of Roman persecution and they went into the west coast of Africa and they dwelt there. But guess what? Those Hamas were there too. And the black Africans resented the regal class of the house of Judah in their land because they... And let me get this, man. Let me get this. The old hatred. Here we go, here we go. It's Ezekiel 25 and 15. It says, Thus saith the Lord, how Shem, how shy. Because the Philistines, being those Hamites, <clears throat> have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out my hand upon the Philistines, and I will cut off it, the Shirifums, and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh Shima Hawashai when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. So, yeah, man, the Lord gonna visit these Hamas and these nations, man. Because <laughs> further up, it goes into make mention of um, um, Edom. And as I see right here, the Amorites being the Japanese and also Moab. I'm sure he makes mention of the other nations too. Basically, the Lord making mention of the judgments he's going to bring upon these nations, man. They had laws, they had customs, they had civility, and they were a regal class of Negro that came down into Africa. And later on, it was the Ashkenazi, the Islamic slave traders as well, that then worked together with the indigenous black Africans. So basically, it was the Arabs, the Israelis, also known as Amalek, and the, the Hamites, man, being those... Um, people like the Ethiopians, um, those Hamitic tribes. You see them. You see them. Um, with them discs, with the discs in their mouth. They're tall as hell. They're skinny. They're dark as hell as well. They got bald heads. Um, and they also got um, like these bones in their noses. <clears throat> and have some crazy ass customs. Uh, yeah, and also um, <laughs> the ones you'd be seeing, putting their heads. In, um, in the cow's private parts and washing themselves with the cow's urine. <laughs> they're, 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 they're the um, indigenous black Africans that he's talking about. To enslave the regal house of Judah. And yeah, the house of Judah being the, um, the Negroes. Actually, yeah. Let me say it again. The house of Judah being um, Judah, Benjamin and Levi being the southern kingdom. And that was to fulfill prophecy, man. Like it makes mention in the book of Jeremiah, man. Chapter 50. Oppressed. Together. Jeremiah 50 and 33 says, Thus saith the Lord, you have of hosts. The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives, held them fast. They refused to let them go. And yeah, man. The ten tribes being the northern kingdom were already in the land of Ashraf, which is called America today. They were already there. The majority was already there. So when Christopher Columbus came over, he saw the ten tribes. He deceived them and took revenge upon them. And then what they did was bring the southern kingdom over with the help of um, the Arabs and those Hamites. And <laughs> I hate to say this, but yeah, there were Israelites that tried to save themselves and sold out other Israelites, man. <clears throat> but yeah, let's carry on. Oh yeah, let me um keep making, let me make mention of this um like I made mention, Judah and the house of Israel were pressed together, being the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. So. 
the house of Judah being Judah, Benjamin, Levi were taken from the west coast of Africa over to the land of Asaraf and they were basically put in bondage, man. Because the the most the, the majority of the Israelites were already over there. So <laughs> literally it makes no sense to go to somewhere f across the, um, the other side of the earth to go and get a majority of people and then bring them to that land. And the reason why I say that is because the journey, a lot of um, Israelites died, man. A lot of Israelites died during um, the journey to go into the land of Asher, which is now called America. <clears throat> So, <laughs> like I may mention, man, the, the peace of Bamoti, as it makes mention in 2nd Edges chapter 13, being the Northern Kingdom, the majority, they're the majority, and they were already, they were already there. And what they had to do was bring the house of Judah over, man, being Judah, Benjamin, Levi, over to the land of Asherah to fulfill that prophecy of Judah and the house of Israel or Judah and Jerusalem being oppressed together. And as they made mention, they were, they were, they were held captives, man. Tartarus being slavery, man. <clears throat> and then also you got the other Israelites that were, for example, um, the Northern Kingdom were scattered abroad as well. Some of them were, were taken onto the, the ships, man. And they got put on these different islands. For example, you got, Cuba, Peru, um, what else is there? Argentina, Chile, and literally they were put over there for the reason of um <clears throat> for what's the word called man? <clears throat> I forgot what um what the what's it called um I forgot what it's called, man, but yeah, the things that they were um, producing over there in those lands, like, um, like uh, for example, I know with Benjamin in the Caribbean, they were producing um, sugar cane or sugar and tobacco and things like that. They were in high demand back then, and that's how Esau made his riches, man, by having the tar tribes being scattered into all these different um, lands, man. Selling them, making money off them, and then having them work, basically producing tobacco, sugar, um, different spices. And um, yeah, man, that's how Esau got his riches. Like he's mentioning um, the book of Ezekiel chapter 28. You know, you know what, let me get that. And then I'll close out. Yeah, Ezekiel 28 and 1, it says, The word of the Lord, Yehawah, Bashem HaShai, came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord, Yehawah, Bashem HaShai, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am God, I sit in the sea of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God. Thou that hast set thine heart as the heart of God. It says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic has thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Before, therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh Shem Shai, because thou hast set the heart as the heart of God being their mindset. They actually believe they're God's <laughs> oh, craziest people. It says, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beer of thy wisdom. And they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. And thou shalt die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. But thou yet say before him that slaved thee, I am God. But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slaved thee. So yeah, man, Esau is going to be brought down low. As I mentioned in um, Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, Isaiah chapter 14. That's the elite of the um, Idumeans. Basically falling from their power, man. Being taken out of rulership. And you got all the other nations looking upon them. Saying, is this the man that did shake the, um, the world, man? 
and I opened up the house of his prisoners and destroyed um, and basically left the world as a wilderness, as a desolate wilderness, shall I say. And yeah, man, that's going into the intercontinental ballistic missiles because that's what they're going to do. <clears throat> and that great sword was given to Esau Edom, man. And that's why you see the Russian Edomites and these American Edomites, they have the best of the nuclear capability, man. <clears throat> and they're going to use them to leave the earth as a as a desolate wilderness, man. Did you also say different regions and different lands as a desolate wilderness? Because we know these warheads are going to be hitting different places, man. But the majority of them are going over there to America, man. To leave it completely desolate. <clears throat> but yeah, man, I hope this was edifying. I'm going to give a praise and glory to you. And shalom.